wasn't it just last week I was begging for a miracle, daddy? I wasn't too sure if you heard me, but you came through for me. And I wonder why you keep giving me grace, did you do that already? Mind is something about your love and something.
Well, good morning. God keeps blowing my mind. <clears throat> the young man that's singing that song <clears throat> was clearly inspired by God. And I, I posted it. Gail is not on this morning. She's um, taking, she and Bob are taking Javon to camp. And so we pray her a safe journey. But today, this is, by the way, Morning Prayer Live, and I am Pastor Winston Watson. You know that for the last month or so, I have been teaching in Kingston and here in um, Port Maria. <clears throat> and uh, it has been a challenge to me to look at some things going on as I watch the postings on Facebook and I get the various messages. And I realize that there are some real, real issues. I, I have noticed um, prophets of God posting things <clears throat> to give you numbers for the lottery. I've noticed prophets of God posting things and saying all manner of things over your life. And the Lord spoke to my heart about something. And uh, I want to share it with you today. It is in the book of Jeremiah and the 23rd chapter. The book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Uh, let me point something out to you. An obedient child receives the blessings of the home. An obedient child um, is honored by their parent. An obedient child <clears throat> experiences the goodness of their environment. But if the child is disobedient, no matter how, because I, I've seen this happen, the child is disobedient, the child goes outside and tells someone or complains about the parents or complains about their situation and the person on the outside not knowing or maybe even knowing tells the child oh but you are right <clears throat> just keep doing what you're doing and unfortunately many of us are falling for the nice and nice words of people and not the words of God we will never receive the fullness of God's blessing. I'm not saying you're not going to get a little bit here and a little bit there. But you will never receive the fullness of God's blessing. <clears throat> no matter how many prophets prophesy over you. No matter if I come and rub oil all over you. If you're a disobedient son or daughter of God. Romans chapter 1. I think around the 22nd. Or the 23rd verse says, Many of us hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. Many of us <clears throat> know what the Word of God says, but we hang on. We hang on to that Word, but we are still living in unrighteousness. How can we expect God to move in our unrighteousness? We, are, we do evil things. When I say that, you speak about your neighbor, you curse your neighbor. You know, you backbite your pastor. You talk negatively about your church. And yet you expect God to bless you. You expect God to move in your life. If you are a rebellious servant, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, my friends. I want us to line up with God's word. Listen to this. Verse 13 in Jeremiah 23. Among the prophets of Samaria, I saw this repulsive thing. They prophesied by Baal, familiar spirits and evil spirits, and led my people astray. And among the prophets of Jerusalem, the prophets of the very house of God, I have seen something horrible. They commit adultery 
and they live a lie. Oh my God. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that not one of them turns from their wickedness. They are all like Sodom to me. The people of Jerusalem are like Gomorrah. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty says concerning the prophets. <clears throat> I will make them eat bitter food and drink poisoned water. Because the prophets of Jerusalem, um, because of the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has spread throughout the land. This is what the Lord God Almighty says. Why do you think the land is the way it is? We have, I, I was praying yesterday and uh, the Spirit of God said a word to me that I'd never heard before. That there are prophetic incubators around the world. And he didn't mean it from a positive per perspective. Every just about every second person that I meet today is a prophet. There's a young lady that I met <clears throat> a little while back um, through her sister. And uh, um, her little sister's name is Maria. And uh, when I listen to her and I see the humility of her life, there is a genuineness about her heart. That's a prophetess. That's someone that hears from God. She's not creating fanfare and telling someone, send me money and, you know, and giving all kinds of wayward prophetic words. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> she's so hesitant to open her mouth. We ought to recognize that not everyone that has a label was called by God. Even the pastor like myself, not every pastor is called by God. Not every apostle has been entitled by God. And so you have to learn to discern what's going on around you. You have to know when the man or the woman of God has a genuine heart to minister to your situation. Because if you are in sin and in unrighteousness, and somebody comes and prophesies goodness and mercy and blessing all over your life and does not correct the issue uh, in your life, that is not the right kind of word for you. You need to straighten up your life, man and woman of God. <clears throat> you need to be obedient first to the word of God, man and woman of God. You need to be first understanding that God is not a God that winks at the sin of mankind. Yes, we make mistakes. Yes, we have challenges. Yes, we repent and we move on. But some of us are not repenting. We are holding on to our righteousness. And yet we are praying and we are asking God to move in our unrighteousness. And help us in our unrighteousness, my God. This is... A challenge for me. I have been teaching at a church in Kingston and when I look at the faces of men and I see the needs, the genuine heartfelt need of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and we are out there as men and women of God prophesying all kinds of foolishness and all kinds of personal things. My God, listen to this. They speak, this is verse 16, this is what the Lord Almighty says, do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says you will have peace. My God, my God. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their own hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word this morning? Now, this is not a nice and icy. 
a sugary message or a sugary devotional this morning. I want to challenge your heart. I want to challenge you to walk in righteousness. To not just have an itching ear for someone to say something nice to you. And to say God is at peace with you when God is against the practices in which you are engaged. When God is against and the word of God is against the very things that your hand has found to do. My friend, good morning. My friend, I want you to this morning, wherever you are in the world, Get on your own knees and begin to talk to God for yourself. Yes, you may listen to me. Yes, you may listen to someone else. And not everyone is an evil person, obviously. But you have to know the Lord Jesus Christ from personal experience. You have to engage Christ from personal experience. <clears throat> you have to turn from sin this morning. And you, when a prophetic word comes, you have to judge that prophetic word based on the circumstances of your own relationship with God. He will not tell you there is peace and safety when you are full of pride and the enemy is allowed in your life with the destructive influences of the demonic world. He will not come and lay blessing at your footsteps when you are in disobedience and in rebellion to the body of believers that you ought to be a part. He will not, he meaning Christ, he meaning Holy Spirit, he meaning God the Father, none of the Godhead will walk into your home, will walk into your world and bring that which is necessary to carry you into delivery uh, and into deliverance if you are in rebellion to his word. Turn. Turn this morning. Adjust this morning. Ask forgiveness this morning. The Bible says he is faithful and just. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I saw men and women with so many challenges over the last two weeks. They came to me early in the morning. They came to me after the services at night, I saw them and I saw their faces as there was a recognition of the challenges that the enemy has brought into their lives. And I saw the delivering power of God as it moved in the lives of men and women. My God. But it takes us to step back for a moment and look in the mirror and say, God Forgive me. When our obedience is fulfilled, God will begin to work. We wonder <clears throat> why we've been praying. One of the things that many people will ask me, they will say, Pastor, especially young women, Pastor, will you pray for my husband? Because my husband is wayward. My husband is challenged. It is not often that I get that kind of request from a man, from a husband, asking for prayer for his wife. But I will typically get it from a wife asking for prayer. And the prayers will, request will sometimes be, will you ask God to change my husband? And the Lord is saying, I want to change you, woman of God. The man will come and ask for the supervisor or the manager or the job to change. But God is saying, man of God, I want to change you. Woman of God, I want to change you. Child of God, I want to change you. You act 
like the devil and then you want God to come into your house. You speak and live like the demons around you and yet you want God to come in and smooth over the rough places of your life. Change is required. Choice, and I'm not talking to the sinner this morning. The sinner <clears throat> has nothing but an evil nature. I'm talking to the man or woman of God that has the nature of God. And as Romans 1 says, that you have the truth of God in unrighteousness. My God. My God. When Jesus went around, he corrected the ills of those that said that they were in relationship with God the Father. He whipped them out of the temple. He spoke of them as whitewashed graves. He told them that their hearts were not right. And this morning I can come with nothing else but a correction, not just for you, but even for myself. I cannot live a life before the people of God that would be inconsistent. I can't say one thing and live something else. I can't tell you to live one way and then I live another way. My friend, I look at Christians and I see the dishonesty. I look at Christians and I've had friends, there's a CFO that I met in Jamaica of a major corporation. And he told me that in his organization, he used to hire Christians in his particular department. And he said he stopped because they were so clearly dishonest. And they justified it. Quit. Quit speaking about God in one breath and then acting like the devil in your next step. This morning, I want you to ask God to make you aware of that which is necessary to carry you into the place of glory. It's not because I prophesy over you. It's not because the prophet from some other country prophesies over you. It's not because a man or a woman of God comes and tells you what you did yesterday and what you're thinking in your mind. The Bible tells me that even the devils know that there is a God and they know the name of Christ and they tremble. You and I, you and I must turn from our wicked ways, child of God must turn from our evil ways, child of God. Must turn from our disobedience, child of God. Must turn to the righteousness that God deserves in our lives. We must begin to speak. We must begin to live like the godly man or the godly woman that we are. We steal. We speak negatively, we gossip. And I don't need to tell you what's going on in your own life. You know. You know the inconsistencies of the very nature of God that has been deposited to you. And yet you are living something else inconsistent with the godly nature that he has deposited in you. Your acts are not the acts of righteousness. Your thoughts are not the thoughts of righteousness. Your words are not the words of a righteous heart and life. <clears throat> and we have become seared in our conscience and we allow these things. I was speaking to one of our elders last night and he said something to me that resonates. He said, Rev, nobody could come to me and tell me A and B and C about someone else without me confronting them. But we listen. 
and we gossip and we don't correct. Someone comes and tells you about Brother Shaquille, um, Shaquille Lewin, and say, you know, Brother Shaquille is doing this, and you don't confront them. Let's go to Brother Shaquille now. Let's call Brother Shaquille now. Let's pray for Brother Shaquille. We listen and we gossip and we pull down Brother Shaquille. My God, men and women of God, let us change our ways. Let us change our ways. We are disrespectful to parents. Dishonest with our time on the job. Dishonest to take the, the things that are the job's uh, materials and the job's products. We are quick to take them and use them personally. There was a young man I had left several thousand dollars in an account that was slated for a particular ministry activity. And I went away and one of my uh, ministers who <clears throat> was responsible for the finances of the church and had access to the account, had my card, went into the account and took money out and did something else with the money. I was livid when I came back. I was livid because when God says, use this hundred dollars, and it was not, it was several thousand US dollars. When God gives us something and says, use it for this, we have no right. We have no right to use our life in a way inconsistent with God's call. <clears throat> we have no right to use our finances in a way inconsistent with God's mission for the finances of our life. The mission of the finances of our life is for the ministry and it's for our family and for our personal life. It is not to do illicit things. Once I used my time and I bought a very nice gold chain. Beautiful chain and it had a cross on the end of it. And I remember I liked to wear a black shirt. Then I was working out and I had, you know, biceps and all of that stuff. <laughs> and so I would wear this black, black shirt and I would wear my gold chain and it would, you know, emphasize certain parts of my physique. And they broke into my home in Kingston. And they took two things the day that they broke into the house. I had electronics, I had computers, I had cameras. They took two things out of my home. And one was the gold chain. You see, I was disobedient with the mission for my money. I never did that again. <laughs> There are things that I've done with my actions. I remember one night I felt like going into a club. I wasn't going in there to drink. I wasn't going in there to do anything. But the Lord said to me that night, go home. I would go to certain places and I would minister in these places. I would actually go in, sit, and I would share the word of God with people in there if God would give me a word. And many times he would send me specifically, I'm leaving Bible study, and he would say, there is such and such a person in this place. Go in there when you see them, tell them this. And so I would do that. But this one night I decided to do it myself. And I just wanted to go in. I wanted to um, play some pool. And I wanted to maybe throw some darts. So I went in. When I got in there, a young man walked up to me and he said, Minister, what are you doing in here? I felt like this tall. Because God immediately corrected the situation. I turned around. I got out of there. I went back to my car. And as I drove out of the parking lot, I saw blue lights, blue and red flashing lights behind me. The police pulled me over, thinking that I was coming out of the um, particular club because, and I was drinking. So he wanted to give me a sobriety check. But I wasn't. But that's, but that's the situation, you see, my friends, that we get ourselves into. Many times, 
by being disobedient to the word of God, disobedient to the instructions of God, no longer continue to hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. Let us self-correct. Don't wait for the hammer to drop. Don't wait for someone to come and tell you what's wrong. You know, and I know, what God is attempting to speak to us as individuals about. You know the habits that we have. You know the challenges that confront us. You know the friends that we encourage around us that we ought not have. You know <clears throat> change it. Address it. Don't go into this weekend with the burden and with the weight of sin that so easily beset us. Clear it up, my friends. I want to pray for you this morning before we leave. You know, the song that we played earlier talked to the promises of God and said many things about how God has the ability to just blow our minds with the blessings of heaven. And many of us, for years we have been praying for certain changes and God is saying, when will you change? When will you listen to me? When will you be obedient? When will you get out of rebellion? When will you stop trying to twist my arm? When will you begin to truly heed my word? When will you allow me to step into your life? The question the question and the statement of Christ, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears me, now, not only do you have to hear him, but you have to open the door. You have to say, God, you see, it is your responsibility. It's not his. He says, behold, I give you an opportunity. Are you ready? Behold, I give you an opportunity. Are you ready? I, I look. There's a friend of mine, a um, wonderful woman of God, and she has some tattoos on her arm. And there are Christians that have come to me and said, you know, Pastor, Christians shouldn't have tattoos. Let me point something out to you. Who are you to judge another man's servant? Now, that young lady may have a tattoo on her, on her arm, but her heart is right with God. What about your heart? What about the issue that is blinding you and the issue that is confronting you? There was a young lady that came to me um, I think it was last week, and she was very concerned because she had put on um, nail polish and it was of a darker color. And when she put it on, someone in her church, another sister in her church, this is here in Jamaica, another sister in her church came and was confronting her for wearing nail polish. And uh, the sister that came to me said, but Rev, this lady is, is seeing, is engaged in a relationship with a married man. She is in, a, in an adulterous relationship with a man that is married, that's living with his wife. And she is breaking the family apart. And she is telling me about nail polish. I am a prayer person. By the way, this individual I know very well. I know what their lifestyle is. I know how they live their life. And they are right with God. And yet someone is that's doing something so egregious <clears throat> has come to correct them. This is the kind of believer we have around us. And we need to change that kind of life, my friend. We cannot continue to live 
by holding truth in unrighteousness. The things that come to my knowledge, the things that come to cross my path, the, the things that people share with me, my God, my God, the thing that goes on in the pulpit. A young lady, a teenager, a 14-year-old came to me and began to share some egregious things taking place in her life with family members and with clergy. My God. And I've had to deal with it. In some instances, when it has come across my path, I've had to go to the police and make a report because I have a civil responsibility to deal with the challenges. And whether or not you have the label Christian, there's a level of civil accountability that I will associate to you and associate with your actions. We cannot live with truth and still be in a world, our created world, of unrighteousness. The church and judgment, that is self-analysis, Christian man or Christian woman, you've got to begin to look at yourself. Many times when we lash out, when ministers begin to lash out at homosexuality and lash out at adultery and sexual impurity and lash out at all of these other things that they perceive to be going on. Many times it is a personal challenge and they are crying out for help. Because I've had to deal with it. I've had the pastors that have come to me. A pastor called me up and drove several hours to come and see me because he had a challenge. He had been married for years. He had been in the church for years. He had a wonderful church. He had a wonderful congregation. He knew the word of God. And yet he was now having thoughts and challenges about his sexuality. And he came. Actually, I, did, I didn't know him before that. He called me. I was online and he called me and said, can I come see you? Can I come talk with you? My God. And he came and he sat before me and we prayed together. We spoke together and I interceded for this young man's life. And he maintained his ministry and his ministry walk because there was a demonic presence that was trying to take him away from God's destiny for his life. My friend, my friend, we need, we need <clears throat> to be the sounding board for those that need Christ, for those that the enemy <clears throat> is attempting to sift. So straighten up, man of God, woman of God, straighten up your life. Allow the word of God to truly come alive in you. <clears throat> I have the youngsters that come and talk about so many things. I have the young boys and girls that come and report things that are so challenging to them at home or in their particular environment. And I have to sit and I have to talk with them. I have to lay hands on them. I have to rebuke the demonic presence that's trying to take them away. I have to deal with those issues. My God. God's calling us to a new season of deliverance and ministry. My God. And it's not because of loudness. It's not because of anything like you and I maybe see going on around us. <clears throat> it's not because we want to have conversations with the devil. It's not because we want notoriety. But people are so hurting in the body of Christ. People are demonized and don't even realize at times that the anger and the selfishness and the fear the phobias 
that they, that they are living under. The strongholds of the enemy established in their life. They can get out of it. My God. They can get out of it. But it takes you and I to be in the place to help them. Oh, she and I. The hearts that have sent me messages over the last two weeks. The hearts that have come to me with the pain. Saying, Rev, I heard your teaching. Can I be delivered? Can I be delivered? And I said, God, like Sister um, Campbell just said, Lord, I said, God, clean me up also that I can be a vessel used by you in the lives of these people. That I can be a vessel that demonstrates the power of heaven. Lord, clean me up. I choose righteousness. I choose holiness. I choose to make a covenant with my eyes that I will look on no evil thing. I choose to be the intercessor to help those around me this morning. I choose. I will not allow Satan to choose for me. I will not allow a man or a woman to choose for me. I choose to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And when I choose to do so, I know that he is with me. He will never leave me or forsake me. Bless them this morning, Father, with a resolve, Father, to be committed to you. Bless them with a resolve to walk with you, Father, in holiness. Bless them this morning, Father, to be strengthened in you, Father. My God, last Wednesday night, and as we were at church in Kingston, and when I finished sharing and praying over <clears throat> and making confession over the congregation, I heard people throughout the room, shouting out in what should have been a very quiet church. People shouting out, glory to God. People shouting out, hallelujah. People expressing themselves in an atmosphere of deliverance. All because the presence, the brooding presence of the Holy Spirit was in the household of faith that night. When I was heading there, I had to drive maybe a couple of hours to get to the location, and I was praying in the Holy Ghost for just about the entire time heading to this place, and God says, I want you to pray ahead. Pray into the lives of the people. Pray for the right words. Pray for the right hearts. Pray that I will handpick those that will come in. Pray that those that come will be delivered. Pray that those that are there will receive an answer to their heart's cry. And I saw, I saw and I felt that awesome presence of Jehovah, Lord God, Lord God, 
Give us more opportunity to be a blessing. Give us more opportunity, Father, to be a blessing and strengthen us that we can strengthen the weak hands and the feeble knees around us. Father, help us to truly be what you want us to be in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to play that song again as I leave this morning. And forgive me for tears, but my heart breaks. My heart aches for those, not to give them a prophetic word, maybe that might be a part of it, but for them to see the Christ that I see. For them to know the Christ that I know. For them to be the Christ follower that our Lord Jesus Christ birthed them in the earth to be. My friend, you have a wonderful day and weekend. Let Christ be formed in you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wasn't it just last week I was begging for a miracle, Daddy? Daddy. I wasn't too sure if you heard me, but you came through for me. And I wonder why you keep giving me grace. Did you do that already? Man, there's something about your love is out of this world, and it's only be steady. Morning again, Isaac. Thank you for that sentiment, <clears throat> those words you shared. This is Morning Prayer Live. I'm Pastor Winston Watson. Please all have a wonderful day in Christ. In Jesus' name. Oh.